that work from home arrangements have always been under the radar of PH companies in Metro Manila because of the traffic. COVID-19 will become the beta test to prove that this is doable. Expect more companies to enact once a week work from home arrangements post pandemic. That's if the pandemic ends in two or three weeks. But What's up, you guys, and welcome to Adulting with Joy Spring, the how-tos of your 20s told by a 20-something-year-old, traversing through adult life expectantly and with gusto. Don't forget to check out joyspring.com for the show notes and use the hashtag, hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring for all your comments, suggestions, and hopefully non-violent reactions. So yesterday, the president had another address to the country. And, you know, I I have to say that I didn't know that President Duterte and I had so much in common. What? <laughs> Wait a minute, what? In that, as you and my husband would always say, you know, we never know which, which personality will come out of Joyce. And the same with President Duterte. You never know. Like, the other, the two, two nights before this, he, he had, like, he had notes and he followed those notes, right? And then after that, he's like, I'm gonna shoot y'all. And then this one is just, <laughs> we got plans and no money. <laughs> it's like, you never know which Duterte you're gonna get, right, Parts? Oh, yeah. Uh, this was, because I have not missed a single press conference. Uh, wow. But last night, last night I said, no. Like, I'm, I, I, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna watch it. I don't, I'll just read the, the cliff notes. Um, and I don't know. I, I guess at this point, I don't want to say that I've given up because, I mean, I'm far from it. I'm not giving up on my country whatsoever. But I know that there are some 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 ideas that he has that are not necessarily, like, what's, what's, what he really wants to talk about. Like, I read one part that he wanted to, to like, throw some people into the ocean so that the fish could get fatter. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that's why I missed this one. That's why I had a, an, an inu man na lang, and I was like, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna not get myself involved with that. But the one thing that did come out of it, no, it's funny because he had a whole press conference, and that's not when he announced that there is now going to be an extension towards uh, the the lockdown. Another, but he just said that there like might be, diba? That's what he said. But hindi pa siya sure na, uh, we're, we're, basically what he said was, we're leaning towards extending it for two to four more weeks. But he never made an official announcement. And we just woke up to it this morning. Yeah, so, you know, he, he could have said it last night. I guess he needed, uh, one more night to, to sleep on it. I'm, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. But, the one thing that we do know is that we're gonna be here until the end of April. So, we are, Pretty much somewhere near like the midway point of uh, of the lockdown, and if there's anything we we need to know what we learned in the first half of this to see how we're going to survive the next half. That's right. So we wanted to create an episode that goes okay. So the president extended the Luzon lockdown officially until April 30, which is three weeks from now. What do we do now? We have you no know, idea. I- yeah, so I, I, I started, I started when we were talking, when we were texting and thinking about this. Uh, the, the one thing that I did learn, uh, like immediately popped into my head was that if it wasn't for this show, I wouldn't take, I wouldn't be taking showers and because it's, it's a reminder for me to take a shower, the, this, this podcast. So, uh, I'm, I'm happy that we are, are here and a reminder to take showers. So, Precisely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and the same with me, and I think the same for, for a lot of people. I was reading this article the other day, and it said, you're not um, working from home. You are at home, and you're trying to work. 
right? It's a whole different setup. And for people who don't know how to work from home, it's just been an adjustment period this past few weeks. I've got a yes. couple of friends who, you know, also work as a freelancer, also work um, per project. And we're all kind of figuring out, okay, how do we deal now that a lot of people are starting to adjust and realizing that, oh, pwede pala tayong mag-work at magtrabaho while we're all at home. So how do we... How do we change things? And the first week of the community quarantine when the whole COVID-19 pandemic situation blew up, I was uh, in a call with Chef uh, Ed Bugia, which you can listen to here on Adulting with Joy Spring. And he was like, it was so hard for SMEs, for um, small to medium enterprises, already business owners, na they were already looking at, okay, ano yung mga options natin for our employees? What's gonna happen now when obviously it's gonna be a huge change, our economy is gonna take a big blow, and and we just don't know where to go. So what is your plan, Erin Ataide, for the Ooh. next few weeks? Meron ko bang plano? I just, okay, this episode is not going to be like a how-to of some sort, but at least we're just trying to digest this whole situation. What do you have in mind? Like, no judgment. We won't judge you. Just let us know what you think. Uh, okay, so I've been... I've been reading about what a lot of people have been saying and, uh, you know, a lot of people have been doing and how, how my friends are and how, you know, people are reacting to it. And um, I think the one thing that I will do for the remainder of the lockdown is I will no longer be putting pressure on myself to be more creative, to be, you know, to, to, to reach something. Because I think that there might be an... There's like an existential crisis within the quarantine where, I mean, we have fallen victim, victim to it as well, where we, we've told people that, you know, you should try and learn something or try and be, uh, you know, more, more active online or something like that, you know, or learn a brand new Mm, talent or something. Yeah. I, I think at this point, you know, whatever it is that we can do to, to make it, just to make it to the end of this. Because if the first part of this has been grueling, the, we're in for a much, much more difficult tail end. It, the, the first half of this is going to be so much different in terms of mental breakdown and, and endurance than the last half of this. Yeah, yeah. It's so basically what Erin Tide is saying is it's all downhill from here. Thank you, Parts, for <laughs> yeah. that incredibly encouraging piece of advice that you're giving all of our listeners. Yes. So I, I think <laughs> I think we've just been putting a little too much pressure on ourselves. And I think that that's why I we looked at the first half of this as such ex, with such exhaustion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, yeah. okay, we saw we saw um you know, how everyone was reacting. We saw how the world was changing. And Mm -hmm. immediately the first thing that we wanted to do was, okay, we, you know, we need to become better. We need to do this and that and that and that. And then when we weren't able to, when we were not able to, you know, make ourselves better, write the next best film or, you know, start a brand new screenplay or make a podcast, start a, you know, revolutionary YouTube channel. When we weren't able to do that, we felt like we might have failed. Mm -hmm. But I think that we need to look at this now and say, okay, if today is the day where you just try to hold on and make it for the rest of the day, there's nothing wrong with that. And I hope that there, there will be less pressure on us from ourselves and from society to maybe not have the next, we're not probably going to be the next JK Rowling and that's okay. I think also what what you're trying to point out is it's okay to not have a solid plan at this point, you know, because yeah. I feel like a lot of people are putting pressures on themselves going, okay, um, we don't have a solid plan right now. I need to come up with a solid plan right now, right at this moment, because I'm going to lose my job and my company's not doing well in the next six months. It's going to try and recover. And, and that's really the state that I'm in. And to to be honest, it's hard not to think about it. I know it's hard not to think about it because we're all trying to make a living. I have, we have mortgages and, and debts that we have to pay for. And the one month extension was a lot of grace and kindness 
from companies, but those companies do need their money. They don't, yes, they also they do. need to pay their employees. So that means that the consumers will have to take eventually the brunt of it all. And, um, I, I was actually reading a couple of articles about this and it's a lot. I'm sure you've read the headlines. Like how different is the world going to be after, mm. after the COVID-19 pandemic? And I wanted just to share with you guys, like, one article that I found on Rappler. And they basically got, sa Philippine setting naman to, the past few articles that I've been reading were always from Italy or from the US or an international level. Ito, Filipinos naman, parang Filipino thought leaders yung tinanong nila, hindi ko alam parts kung bakit nila hindi tinanong ang SOS. When, obviously, tayo yung pinaka thought leaders we, of this generation. We are the blaze setters of this entire movie. <laughs> Movement. I mean, how dare they? How dare? How dare you, Rappler? We're not picking up. We're <laughs> Don't you see how legit this podcast is as a trailblazer for intellectual conversations? <laughs> We're kidding. Obviously, we're idiots and we yes. have no space for this. But yeah, Ren okay. and Rappler knows what they're doing. We're, and, we're just and, idiots. And these incredible people who are part of this um, article. And, and so the, here are just a couple of things that they were saying that I totally agree with, right? The first okay. one is that work from home arrangements have always been under the radar of PH companies in Metro Manila because of the traffic. COVID-19 will become the beta test to prove that this is doable. Expect more companies to enact once a week work from home arrangements post pandemic. That's if the pandemic ends in two or three weeks. But if it doesn't end in two or three weeks, I'm sure everyone's going to start looking for work from home types of jobs, right? Bart? Yes. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. Would no, I, and, and I agree that with or without, you know, oh, you know, when this comes to an end, that you're, you're right. Work from home will become a very, very, um, uh, viable decision that, uh, that will change the way that we, we look at this. I have a friend who works for, for Google and she, in Google, they have a one day work from home. Like they can mm, already. Do wherever, yeah, they've had it for so long already. Ever since she started there, um, that's always been something that they that they kind of impose. So whether mm. as long as you get work done, and it is obviously because it's a dot com, it's easier for them that all their sales and all that. And all, yep. I mean, they have the infrastructure online to be able to handle it. But I think that now um, it's going to be a little bit more widespread where. Mm. Uh, now if, if it can be held in a, in a, in an email, there will not be that meeting anymore. And even if there is a meeting, there will be a Zoom to be able to handle that. I think that, yeah, it will. I think we, we got so used to, especially now, we got so used to not being around other people that it will change the world that we won't have to be around other people that much anymore. Mm-hmm. That's right. Although, it, it, yeah. Yeah, although I think that, that need for human interaction, like I have a friend, we were talking about this, and she was saying, but you know, there really are meetings that you need person to person, Um, me, you know, you have to be together in one room to explain it. And then I kind of agreed with her until I started doing Zoom. And, uh-huh. and all of these face to face meetings were in. I think what she was trying to say was you're able to read the body language of the person. You're able to see how they're responding to your ideas. You're able to in real time understand what the other person is thinking, right? As compared to emails or texts where there's, you have to wait to see what yeah. they think. Ito mas mabilis talaga yung person to person interaction. So I think that changes everything. And that's the second point that they were making in this article. They said essential business travel will not will now be redefined as this quarantine will prove that meetings can still be effective even when done remotely with Zoom and Microsoft Teams investing more in their technologies and other more competitors entering virtual meetings will start to feel that you're in the same room and i agree i mean we've been doing this show for what two weeks now and we've yeah. never been in the same room and and it just it sounds like we're having a conversation i mean if you listen to the podcast and just listen to the audio without seeing the video you're going think that we were recording this in a studio uh, yeah uh, for those that didn't know 
We yeah. really are in a studio. Wow, in a home well, we're, studio. Yeah, we're we're really sitting across from each other. Just in case you're only listening to catch to him the in the light. Go and, and like the Facebook page. You'll see yeah, Aaron and Titus yeah. lying. Uh, no, we're not lying. If you if you can like that page, then I will admit it. But, uh, until then. Uh, until then, it is all hearsay. It is yeah. just still yeah. all hearsay. That's um, right. I, I, I completely agree. And especially for our work, um, mm. where if there's like a pre-production meeting and all, and, and all that, that, that still is something that I think I need to be in the room mm. with, with the director or with, you know, the, the, the writer or anything like that, 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 you know, there's, there's something about being, in in like a in like a, a a room like a war room talking about that kind of stuff. But then again, there are meetings that there were meetings that could have been emails. There are ballroom meetings that could have been just regular meetings on Zoom now. So I think what will happen is that everything will take one step lower, mm-hmm. and, and a regular email can go down to being in a group chat. A meeting that could easily be an email. A ballroom meeting can easily just become a regular meeting on on Zoom, and then it's the really important ones that are going to be the ones that has everybody all together. That's if this pandemic ends again in two or three weeks. But if it extends, because there are certain charts that say it's going to end by mid May, right, or by yeah. first week of May. But then there are also certain charts that say this is going to go on until the first or second week of July. Obviously, the charts depend on whatever um, data they're studying, and as charts would go, it would only kind of predict as far as the data allows them to. Yes, so this is absolutely. something that we really have uh, to prepare for. Pre- prepare for and and the third point that this article made was online learning naman so online learning for schools and virtual events for companies will be more mainstream again aided by improved technologies that will make virtual communication mimic actual settings last week because i'm a type a personality i enrolled in a, an academy what? Okay. I'm not no, like no, you, no. Bart. No, no, no. I, I love that you just called it out. You're just like, you know, as a type A person. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, I had, I had you to. You needed to do this. You really yes. did. I, I, and, and, here's, and here's my joy. My joy has been the past four or five years, ever since Coursera and all of these online, um, online schools classes? and academies yeah. and classes were available, I would always be enrolled in some sort of online course, whether that was Masterclass or Coursera, or I was enrolled to the University of London or something by online. I would always be doing these classes and I would always try to get my friends to do it, but nobody's ever interested to study online because they're like, girl, we have a life. <laughs> Why would we do that? Yeah. Right? And now no, nobody has yet. Stop looking at me that way. I know you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I probably tried to get you on one of those um, online courses. One or yeah, five I, of those online courses. Right. You tried now, for so long. Now yes, I am. But now, yes, now you're, you're on one of the online courses. And now a lot of people are discovering the joy of studying and learning remotely. I know this sounds so, um, and it's all toxic positivity. Pero yeah. when you look at anything, there's always a positive side of things. Only a cynical person will tell you that you shouldn't look at the, the positive side of things. And when there's an opportunity like that for growth, and improvement, you grab it. Because at yeah. the end of the day, if you're going to sit back here and tell yourself that, Deh, wala na ako magagawa. Magugunaw na rin naman yung mundo eh. We're all going to die anyway. So why study anything? Why better myself? But what if it doesn't happen? Right? It's You, you call it impossible until it's proven possible. So while mm-hmm. there's still that chance for it to be possible, for the situation to be better, you have to prepare yourself so that when the world and the opportunity presents itself, you have something to offer the world. You can... You know, a great idea that I was actually thinking about uh, studying for is, wh- why don't we study first aid, right? Like, you can study oh, so that's much very first nice. aid yeah. online. You can study CPR. You mga ganong bagay lang. So, yeah. Uh, and any any other ones there? Because I like that this is such a, like, the, the list is a very... Uh, communal change, like it's it's a societal change. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, because because after that, I would like to talk about maybe about how the individual will change. Like, yeah. How the individual's life will change. But what, what else was on that list? Okay, so fourth on this list that I think also is going to be super true for the community. It says demand may be cut down due to recession, but expect consumers spending more on health. Whether it be keeping a healthy diet or buying prepaid health insurance just in case another pandemic happens, life insurance demand may benefit from the psychological reflections that people will make during the quarantine too. So this article is called How Do These Thinkers See a Post-Pandemic Philippines Part 1 by Tristan Zinampan on Rappler.com. If you want to read the rest of it, it's a really interesting article. And it's it's a localized version, I'd like to say, of what a lot of experts from all over the world are talking about we're in we all have to brace for a post COVID-19 world it is never going back to the normal that we thought we once had yeah so uh to everyone out there that has been wondering why is my classmate in high school that I talked to maybe two or three times asking me for coffee this is the time to actually take that coffee when this is all over (laughs) and you might need to get life insurance, uh, Mm -hmm. and, and and health insurance and all of that. Uh, I'm sure, uh, that the, the premiums are going to be very, very expensive, but, uh, I think that now is the time that, that it's going to be very necessary. We, of course, we're, we're all going to have to get back on our feet and get, um, you know, work in, get salary in, you know, try and cover up our savings just in case something like this happens. But I think that that is the, where we can now move on into the individual way that life is going to be changed. Mm-hmm. I think that we, we have gotten to the point now where we know how much money we really do need to have to be able to live in the comfort that we want to have in in case any of this happens again Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like we we know that now we don't need to have live our lavish lives we don't need to to have the newest bags or the newest clothes or newest sneakers or anything like that we know now what the base necessity is and that is of course our food our our water to some extent our internet to be able to Ha- it is obviously internet kind of... is number one part second I mean, water ano ba mas kailangan ko pa mag netflix kaysa maligo yes <laughs> el niño din naman eh so alamin natin yung mga priorities natin parts okay go ahead sorry so so i think that we're all, we we know now like okay so if i have if i'm make if i have this x amount of money in my my savings i know i can take anything that is over that and put that into maybe my life insurance or my health insurance. And you know now that you can cover more bases because you've seen what travesty in, and calamity in the world looks like and what is necessary to be able to do it. That's right. You know, uh, one of the first few episodes that I created here on Adulting with Joy Spring is kind of related to that, like how to handle your money and how to invest. And the first, the first thing that I really did was was something that I read from a book called Automatic Millionaire, and it says, pay yourself. So basically what it said was, it's very hard for people to budget, right? So what you do is anytime money comes in, you quote unquote, pay yourself first. And what that basically means is before you pay any of the mortgage, before you pay for any of your necessities or the things that you want and need, you pay 10% to all of your savings. And that 10% is something that you won't touch. And then if you have money enough for investing, the first thing that you invest in is your health and your insurance. So once you have your health and insurance, that's after you take into property, into other investments, because those are the basic things. And I'm so glad that I read that book and I follow that mantra because it's something that I'm really seeing now, like how important it is. When Wancho and I met, he didn't have like a health card, health insurance or any of that. And I said that the moment that we got married, that's the first thing that I was going to get for him. And true enough, before COVID-19, the pandemic broke out a week before we just had gotten his health card. Nice. Because I applied for at the beginning of this year. So well, that's one of the things that I think we have to um, think about. Like you you were saying that, but now it's really the necessities that you're you're going to start thinking about these days. Yeah, it's it's no longer, oh my God, I need a new camera. You know what I mean? It's now going to be, okay, I, if I have, you know, a little bit extra amount of money, will I use it 
to go and, you know, have a, a blast of a weekend? Or am I going to maybe put it on, on a, you know, towards getting my health insurance at this Save point? It up. See, so yeah. it, 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 things, the perspective is going to change. And, mm-hmm. and we've said that before on this show that, that everyone's perspective is going to change. How that will change is going to be up to you. Now, if you don't change, oh man, the world, this brand new world is going to pass you by. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to devour you. It's going to devour it's you. Going Any to person devour who's you. not able to adapt. Okay. Here's my question though, parts. What's one luxury item that you wish you had now that you don't have? All things one considered. Luxury, ooh, one luxury item that I wish I had right you, now. You know what's mine? Mm. What? A massage chair. <laughs> like, I really wish I, I invested in one of those massage chairs. And like recently, I've just been looking at the stores. I've been looking at SNR, yung mga online. Like, guys, wala ba kayong massage pillow man lang dyan? Because wala na tayong, wala na yung luxury of massa, of massages, right? And mm. my husband gives horrible massages. I love him very much, but he's not very good at giving massages. So, it's, it's that one luxury item that I wish I had. The second luxury item that I didn't think I needed, but I really wish I had was an HDMI card capture. Now, an HDMI card capture is basically this apparatus that you connect with your laptop and yes. your camera that helps yes. you stream with an HDMI ready camera. And I cannot find anything. All of the online shops now don't deliver. It's just so hard. So what's, please tell me you have a luxury item that you wish you had because it's just going to make me look spoiled and <laughs> horrible if you don't. No, I I have one. It is my kettlebells. Like I wish I had anything that I could use to work out. Uh, because ever since we started, I have been working out maybe about four times a week, mm-hmm. four or five times a week. And whether it's yoga or I do, uh, like a, a hit class here in my yeah hit class. No, I'm not going to hit class. Go guys, go guys. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Last rep, guys. Last rep. <laughs> uh, no, I I wish I had I wish I had anything that would you know, help me with, with my working out. I know this sounds so, you know, if you really, if somebody just tuned it, walked in and heard us talking right now without the first They'd part of this. they smack us in the, the face. It, it was the most privileged sounding podcast ever. <laughs> but yeah, I wish, I wish I had that. And, and I wish I had an air fryer. Like, <gasps> oh my God, I wish I had an air fryer. Wow, right, right. So uh, so tell us, like, if you guys are listening right now, I, I'd like to know, what's that one thing that you wish you had gotten? Because I'm sure that there was that one thing, right? Like, mga dalawang buwan mo na siyang tinitignan. Samuel, pa parang, hindi, hindi ka naman kailangan ni. Eh. Pero, pero gusto ko talaga, di ba? Meron ganyan, ako, yun yung, yun yung massage chair. I always say like, hindi ko naman kailangan. Pwede mo naman magpazen eh. Pero gusto ko talaga, mahal nga lang. Ganon. But then, I, I really wish I had gotten it right before... Um, um, this whole quarantine started. And it's something that I'm really thinking about now. Like, I literally made my mom go to SNR and ask her to look at the massage pillows <laughs> there. Pero ang mahal, Brad, 6,000, 7,000. Wait a minute. The chair that I'm sitting in right now is about 6,000 and it don't massage me. I'm, I'm, it's not a chair, it's a pillow. I'll show you. See? So, oh, it's a I'm, massage pillow? It's a massage pillow. It's called All Body Massage Pro. Home medics send a check. Oh my See? goodness. So it's. And then you, you sit down on that? Yeah. And, and here's, here's the thing. It's rechargeable battery. So you can actually take it in your car when you're traveling or just go to the parking of your condo and go to the car to pretend like you're traveling because you're going crazy because of the pandemic and get yeah. your massage there. See? Oh my god. Just some of the things that I really wish that I had during this pandemic. Okay, here's the next question. Okay. We go from the luxury item that we wish we had. What is one essential item that you have an excess of that you really wish you could give to people who need it more? My shoes. Hmm. I I have way too many shoes, but see, I've been I was thinking about it, I was like, okay. I, cause obviously I cleaned up everything in my house already. It, like, it's, my house is spotless. Uh, so I was looking at my shoes and I thought, you know, how can I, how can I do this to help anyone? Like, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, there's nothing my shoes can do to, to really help anyone. It is, it's not an essential item. It's a luxury item. 
So now I have to change my answer now thinking about that. <laughs> essential? No, but I, I think- don't know. But see, yeah, I guess my shoes. But I mean, in terms of maybe like anything else, I I really don't have a lot of excess of of anything in my house. Mm-hmm. I've I've always made sure that I, um, you know, or I had something just a fair you wish amount. you had an excess of. Okay, let let's pretend. Let's pretend you okay. have a lot of money and you had the chance to give people um, something essential that that they probably need. What would it be? One item. One category of an item. Hmm. Your favorite product. Hindi to pa post guys. That is something that you uh, think you know will really just give joy to them. Spam. Spam. Or 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 bacon. Like right. I wish I could give everyone bacon. Right. Like if right. if I was a gajillionaire and like I I owned like farms or something. I I don't know. I don't know what like. Piggery? I, I don't know what they're called. I, I, I give people bacon. I, I think I think that would be it. I think bacon, bacon and and gravy. If I had like excess mm. gravy, I think I think gravy and bacon will solve the world problem. Yeah. But you know, actually, come to think of it, right now, um, if there's one thing that I'm in excess of that I wish I could give to everyone out there that needs it, it's rest. <laughs> That's right. I I'm so well rested. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I get a nice amount of sleep. I, I nobody bothers me. I'm here alone. I don't have to. Nobody nobody wakes me up asking me to make them breakfast or anything like that. Which I hope somebody did. But I'm saying that it, since I I wish I could give everyone that is in the front line that is you know doing their work, whether it is part of the the defense uh, towards the 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 sickness or people that are working nonstop. If mm-hmm. I could give my rest to them, I would, I would gladly do that. Yep. We trade our sleep to give you that guys. So if you are yeah. a part of our frontliners, if you know someone who's a frontliner, um, we, we just want to encourage them. It's been really tough and it's going to be tougher the past, the next few weeks. So we're really praying that the government um, will help all of our frontliners will do their jobs and we don't want anyone to fail. I think I think that's the one thing that we've realized the past few weeks. Even if we've seen so much animosity, hatred, and disagreement online, the one thing that we have to agree on is that we don't want our leaders, our government, our private sectors, or anybody who's in the front lines right now to fail, even if we disagree with them. Because everyone's exactly. going to suffer. Everyone is really going to suffer. Uh, no no matter what, if if anyone fails at this point, we all fail. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, whether I, I completely agree with you, whether you agree or you disagree with how everything is going right now, one thing that we have to all agree upon is we need to win. And the only way that we win is by making sure that everybody wins together. Mm-hmm, that's it, right. It, it, it's not a political thing. Bart, you know, one uh, topic that I want to do this week that I think a lot of people might also want to tune in on is how do you stay fit and healthy? While we're in quarantine, I've been having a struggle. Like it's, it's hard to work out and to eat healthy and think about your health when you're just at home doing nothing. I have done disgusting things to my body. Like I have been eating chips while eating ice cream, while drinking soda, while having meats and processed food and everything on top of that. So one of the tips that I had, which is like, uh, ito yung parang ano natin sa kanila, parts. This is the trailer, ha? One of the tips oh, that may I... Teaser, may uh, teaser, may teaser tayo. tayo. Uh, Ang teaser natin sa kanila is, whenever you eat canned or processed food, try to add something organic to it. So, alam ba, kakain ka ng corned beef, lagyan mo ng sibuyas at kamatis, di ba? Or kakain ka ng hotdog, gawin mo siyang sinigang. <laughs> Because diba? who hasn't done that yet? Be- wh- I mean, who if- hasn't done sinigang na hotdog yet? If you haven't done that yet, that just means one thing. Hindi ka marunong sinigang. That? Ayun. <laughs> Oo, yun lang yun. Uh, yun lang. Akala ko sabi mo, just means may hanggang April 30 ka pa. <laughs> <laughs> so watch out for that episode but hopefully yeah. this one um really was something that's informative for for every one of us you know yeah i hope uh, i hope you guys enjoyed another topic that we're probably going to be talking about is uh how love is going to be after this whole thing Ooh. because because uh 
I got yeah. Uh, I got stood up for an e date this week, and I think I've ta- I think I've taken uh, being single to a to whole, whole new level. level. <laughs> if you haven't failed completely in life parts, this was the moment. Grabe na traffic siya. Paano yon? Paano nangyari yon? This was really Paano? the moment. <laughs> Ah, sorry, Chappie, ah. Chappie, Erin, eh. Sorry, ah. Ah, sige, tawagin na lang kita next week. Hindi ako makahanap ng parking, eh. Kaya, uh, sige, uwi na lang ako. <laughs> oh. Yeah. See, yeah. I, I so, want to hear the stories. I, I think we ought to ask our listeners already, what have been your love stories this yeah. COVID-19? And we'll, we'll read them here. We'll read them here. I want to be able to do that um, because I want to feel better about myself. Because I feel like crap. Tapos meron mga <laughs> na-engage at nagpakasal, no, parts? Zinum nila si father. <laughs> si father. May custom background pa si father. <laughs> picture, nung, picture nung simbahan nila. <laughs> picture ng chapel. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, Alright, well, that wraps up this episode. <laughs> And and that also pretty much tells you why we weren't part of that Rappler article. But at least you learned yeah. something from it, right? Yeah. Now <laughs> at we least understand. you featured it. Now yeah. We understand. All right. Well, All we'll right. catch you again tomorrow, guys. Thanks for listening to SOS. All right. Until then, she's Joyce. I'm Aaron. We're out of here. Bye bye. Palam. And that's it for this episode. If you'd like to continue the conversation, go to www.joyspin.com. And if you want to support the podcast, go to patreon.com slash adultingwithjoyspring. I'll talk to you guys soon. Paalam.